call to order the Planning Commission meeting for Thursday, March 18th, 2021. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Harlicker, will you please call the roll? Yes, uh, Commissioner Knobloch. Here. Uh, Commissioner Schmolke. Here. Commissioner Heikola. Here. Commissioner Bradley. Here. Uh, excuse me. Casey. Here. Schmolke. Here. And um, Commissioner Geisler. Here. And uh, Chair Schwartz. Here. Our first order of business is to adopt our agenda. Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Schmolke. Uh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, Schmolke. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to change the order of our items. And uh, so if we could move item number two, excuse me, item number one to the um, to the last place, and we'll start with two and three. Second. Motion by Schmolke, second by Bradley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, agenda's adopted. Next, we have approval of the minutes from our February 18th meeting. Motion. Chair Church. Schwartz, I, I would move that we accept the um, minutes of the February meeting. I'll second it. Motion by Casey, second by Knobloch. All in, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the minutes are approved. All right, our first order of business then will be number two, planning case 21-6, a land use amendment to change the land use from low density residential to moderate density residential at 12691 Hanson Boulevard, Brookstone Construction. Mr. Harlicker. Yes, uh, Chair Schwartz and Commissioners. This is... Um, Kind of a two-part request, uh, the first part being a change in the land use designation, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, low density <coughs> residential to uh, moderate density residential. And this affects the, the east half of the church property located at 127th and Hanson Boulevard. Uh, this is the area right here. Uh, what the applicant is proposing to do is to change the, the land use and the zoning to accommodate uh, uh, townhome development on this uh, area of the underutilized site. Um, the site is uh, 3.6 acres, and they'll be using approximately the east half of that um, for a, a future development. Uh, the west half, which contains uh, the church and, and parking, will remain as, uh, <coughs> as uh, low density residential. Excuse me, can you turn your PA system on? I'm having difficulty hearing. That's Thank you. Okay. At, um, at this time, um, there aren't any, uh, any plans for the development of the property. They, um, the applicant is merely um, doing the uh, prerequisite uh, land use and zone change to uh, accommodate um, that development, future development. Um, and looking at uh, uh, zone changes and uh, land use amendments, you look at uh, is the, are the proposed changes consistent and compatible with the uh, uh, surrounding land uses. You can see from the air photo here, you've got town, it's surrounded by townhome uses. You've got uh, a city park across the street. And then there's an also a trail connection down here and through the back here 
that has a direct connection over to uh, Bunker Hills uh, Regional Park. Uh, one of the uh, issues that we look at or, or criteria that need to be considered is, is it uh, compatible is it in alignment with the uh, city's uh, comprehensive land use plan? And in this case, um, it is. Um, uh, the, one of the stated policies is to identify underused non-residential sites that may be suitable for higher density residential use. And um, this site uh, fits that uh, policy in that um, the church only really uses half the site, so that leaves the other site um, potential for uh, residential development. Another policy is to review and update uh, the city's zoning regulations periodically for uh, residential districts to reflect changing lifestyles and ensure uh, uh, infill development is compatible with surrounding land uses. And again, this uh, proposal here is consistent with that uh, policy in that uh, the surrounding land uses are, uh, are townhouses. When looking at the uh, uh, corresponding zone change, um, again, which the same uh, criteria apply to the zone change, the compatibility with surrounding land uses, uh, consistency and support of the comprehensive plan, as well as uh, an additional uh, four criteria. The first one is the uh, Effective public health, safety, order, convenience, and general welfare in the area, and uh, the uh, the rezoning of this parcel uh, would be compatible with the uh, uh, surrounding uh, moderate density uh, residential land uses. Uh, secondly, uh, the effect on present and uh, potential surrounding land uses. Again, it's consistent with. Um, the way the uh, area around is developed and in conformance with a comprehensive plan and um, it is uh, in conformance with the comp plan and uh, the uh, conformance with any applicable development district and there are no special districts um, which control regulation or control land use on this site so that's not applicable Here's uh, the land use map. As you can see, it's uh, moderate density surrounded except for this site here. Um, and here's the zoning again, uh, low density. Um, these here, this is actually industrial, but it was developed as a planned unit development. So was this area up here as well as the area to the south. Um, so that's why there's the discrepancy with the uh, in industrial zoning district. Um, with that, uh, staff will answer any questions. Um, believe the, uh, a representative of the applicant is here. And uh, staff is recommending the Planning Commission recommend approval of both the uh, proposed land use amendment and, uh, and zone change. Um, I'd like to make a, uh, there was, should have been a, a correction here in the uh, uh, staff report. Uh, the, the, the land use amendment is from institutional uh, to moderate density residential. Uh, and it's institutional because it reflects the uh, current use of the entire site as a church, which uh, falls under the institutional uh, category. Um, with that, I'll answer any questions. Again, then the applicant is, is here in the audience. Thank you, Mr. Harlicker. Commission, any questions for Mr. Harlicker at this time before we would hear from the petitioner? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. Mr. Harlicker, is, um, so I, I'm not quite clear here. Is this its own individual par parcel separate from the church, or are we anticipating a lot split coming later? There will be a, the property will be platted. 
Okay. So it, it will be replatted and will become two separate parcels, but is currently one singular parcel as it, as it is. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. <coughs> I wonder if you could refresh me about the difference between low, low density of residential two to moderate density residential. Uh, low density uh, residential two is primarily single family lots. And the moderate density is um, townhouse development um, that allows um, higher density development. Um, I believe the uh, low density is up to four units per acre and moderate density is up to eight units per acre. Any other questions for Mr. Harlicker? So Mr. Harlicker, if I could ask, the east side that, that is blacked in there, the parcel we're talking about, does that include any of the parking lot right uh, now? It, yeah. Commissioner Casey, yes it does. When they do get to the point where they're gonna develop the site, um, they've got access park, you know, extra parking that they don't need. Um, so they, you know, this site will develop um, potentially as townhomes. And then they would come in for uh, uh, a permit to uh, reconfigure uh, the parking lot. Uh, at that point, um, the parking lot will be brought up to uh, current standards, current code. And uh, they would also be uh, looked at to uh, stormwater management up to current standards. Um, the timing of that would be worked out as part of the uh, site plan review for the town. Okay, so the the blacked out part is the 3.6 acres. The the whole site, which is goes from here over to Hanson Boulevard, and from that tree line up to 127. That's the entire parcel. That's the three point. Okay, so Six we're, acres. we're looking at half of that. About half of it. Okay, and what did you say for moderate residential? I believe it's um, eight units per acre. Eight units, okay. Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Knobloch. I have a question for Mr. Hardlicker. So, uh, in regards to these two, um, the land use amendment and the zone change, will that make the church that will include the church um, the reason I'm asking is if we make this change today does the half that will have the church on it does that open it up to make that also as a development possibility because it it is institutional right now mm -hmm. but if we change the zoning before they come back to us with a plat subdivision until that happens technically could they not make like sell the church and develop townhomes on there too and move the church somewhere else um uh, commissioner Nablock, no the proposal is just for the east side uh, east half of the site okay thank you for clarifying that mr chair commissioner schmolke so one quick question so the recommendation according to the packet, um, is only addressing the land use, correct? That's all we're making the recommendation on, not the zoning? Well, there's, 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 Because it just says specifically land use. I just didn't know if it needed to call out the zone change as well. So the introduction speaks to both? Yeah, there'll be two separate motions, there one will be for the zone separate. change, okay. one for the land use. Okay. The land use should be first and then Thank the you. zone change. Thank you, okay. So actually what Mr. Arker did is he talked about both both cases. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. But we're going to have to handle them separately. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Harlker, a question I have from the information in our packets. In the land use paperwork, uh, it talks about description of the moderate density residential land designation at a density of 5 to 10 units per acre. And then in the zone change paperwork, it talks about at a gross density between four and seven dwellings per unit. 
So which? A four to seven. Four to seven is the correct? Yep. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. Uh, I, I have a general question here. Um, I'm hoping Ms. Harlequin can answer this, but you know, anyone else. Uh, I, I'm curious if we have precedent of changing a land use and zoning without a lot line to define it in the middle, um, because the, we, we actually don't know where that is because it's, it's un, unidentified already as it stands. Um, kind of, I, I, I get the desire to not split it, but get the land use squared away. And so it is a cart before the horse question. And I, mm. and I know we, we know it's coming. Um, is that something we would put as a condition to match with the plat if it were to come later or it, how, like, I'm, I'm a little unclear here because I, I guess where I come down to is the north easterly and southerly lot lines are very clear. We know where those are. We don't know where the westerly line is of, of these two actions we're taking tonight because it doesn't exist yet. Um, so just I, open well, question. Yep. And we, we, if we were to do this again, we'd probably have them plot it first. But we do have a legal description for that, and it's the east 260 feet of that overall parcel. Okay. And then with respect to the legal part of this, we can do it the way we're doing it. We do have a defined line where we'll be able to say, this is where the land use amendment is affected. There's a defined area. We have an administrative assistant who is gifted at these things, and um, she'll do all the paperwork. If that's what we end up doing. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Harlicker before we continue? Or is there anything the petitioners would like to add at this time? Nope, here if you have any questions. All right. At this time, uh, we do need a public hearing. There will be a separate hearing. Actually, can we conduct one hearing for both cases? Probably not. Probably not. All right. <laughs> so this public hearing is just on the land use amendment, 21-6. I will open a public hearing in planning case 21-6 to land use amendment change to change the land use from its industrial, Institu not low institutional. density. Institutional. Institutional to moderate density residential at 12691 Hanson Boulevard, the Brookstone construction. Anyone present wish to speak at the public hearing? If you wish to speak, come up to the microphone, give your name and address for the record, limit your comments to five minutes. And while as many people would like can talk, if what's already been discussed has been talked about, you don't need to re continue to repeat. Go ahead, sir. Up to the microphone, yes. My name is uh, Dan Denicky, and I'm at 12692 Drake Street Northwest. Uh, I am a 47-year resident of Coon Rapids, uh, the last three being in Western Woods. Um, to be honest with you, my wife and I could have bought a town home anywhere we wanted, but we wanted to stay in the community raised our family here, our kids went to school here, we worked in the, in the community for 37 years. And we waited till a place like the one we have in Weston Woods that is private and pristine and quiet. And I have a, some questions and some concerns. Um, as a resident of Western, Western Woods, uh, we already have within a two and a, two and a half block area from 242 to 127th, we have the co-op in the corner of Bunker and 242. We have 72 units in Weston Woods. And then we have the townhomes that number almost 200, uh, just on the north side of 127th. And when is enough enough? All right, All right. we... The question I have, and it was answered um, by this gentleman here, is that the church, parking lot, the church and parking lot are staying. And my question then is, as a planning commission, I know you're always looking ahead. 
What happens in two years if you approve this change all right, to, to moderate residential? In two years from now, the church wants to sell and they sell their property and it would be pretty easy to say, well, we did it for here, this one, we're gonna do it for that one and now we have more units. And I know as a planning commission, I've been on number myself, you have to look ahead what's gonna happen. All right, will there be a second egress out of that area? There's one out of the church parking lot right now, and there's one that comes out of the townhomes on 127th. So I'm guessing as the builder would have to put in a private road and have another egress. We could have three egresses within about 500 feet of one another. Okay. The other issue is traffic. If you're going westbound on 127th to Hanson, you can't go south. Okay. So people have to come through our neighborhood to get to 242 to get to Hanson to go south. Now our roads in Western Woods are private roads. They are maintained by us. They are paid for by us. We pay for the snow plowing, repair, and any pavement. And we've noticed a tremendous amount of traffic starting to go through there now, trying to get to 242 so they can get to Hanson and go south. All right. The big concern, and particularly the 21 units that border the eastern and southern border of that property, there are evergreen trees, all of them 60 to 70 feet tall, that border that edge. Okay. Now, you talked about a lot line. All right, somebody, and I don't know who it was, I don't know if it was the city or whoever, came out and chopped down a bunch of branches and put in a stake, and that stake is right in the middle of the tree on the corner. And I looked down the line, and some of those trees, not very far, maybe six to eight inches are on the west side of that stake. So are all those trees coming out? We hope not, that's why we bought there, for the privacy and the pristine setting that Western Woods is available to us. So that's my question, are the trees coming out? Um, Chair Swartz and uh, gentlemen here, um, that's, at a level of detail that we're not looking at yet. Um, the, the, the access points, um, the, uh, the preservation of trees and, and site-specific questions like that, how, the, how is the development gonna be laid out are items that are looked at when they actually submit development plans. Okay. Um, well, everybody I, here will get the same notice you got for this meeting for the yeah. for site plan approval. With all due respect, all right, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little story. And while I'm a little leery when they say, oh, well, we really don't know yet. Because the last house I bought in Coon Rapids, before I purchased it, there was woods all behind our house the entire way. And I called the city and I asked them, are those woods staying? And they said, absolutely. So I purchased the house and a month and a half later, a bulldozer came in, bulldozed everything and put 40 homes in. So you can see why I'm a little nervous about saying, well, we really don't know yet. Okay. Those trees are a big part of why we live there. Okay. And so at the very least, if you do rezone it, please save the trees so we can have some privacy. At the very least, I'm asking for that. And I don't know if a lot of people care what a bunch of 60 to 80 year old people, you know, want to live in a retirement area that's quiet and pristine, but we do. So I am asking the Planning Commission to reject this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak at the public hearing? Please come up to the microphone, give your name and address. Hi, my name is Rick Koholt. I've uh, lived in, uh, currently live at 12653 Drake Street Northwest and I've basically lived in Coon Rapids all my life. Um, um, I've got a, a question now. The 
This is how many acres? Just over three acres? Well, the when it will be re, re uh, developed, it'll actually be approximately 1.8 acres. Okay, so that uh, 1.8, that means there's be about uh, approximately eight, about 14 units? Uh, that uh, four to seven, seven would be approximately 12. Okay, 12. So how many, how many families per unit? We don't know the details yet, but at this point we're assuming they will be duplexes, single family. Okay, what's, what's the maximum, being that this is going to moderate density, um, what's the maximum, uh, let's say this uh, doesn't pan out and could apartments be put on moderate density uh, property? Up to uh, 12 units. Okay, but it could be a rental, right? Right? I have not the intent. No, not the intent. Okay. I will not sir, intent. please direct your okay. questions to the commission. Okay, sure. I apologize. Um, okay, uh, the uh, um, will the based upon this increased density and potential um, development, does the existing water, sewer, uh, gas, electric utilities are they able to support this development? I'm sure the city has adequate uh, utilities to support, yes. Okay, I mean, is there, uh, I was living they, they in- would be able to run additional water lines, what have you, okay. if necessary. Don't need another water tower? Not, not, not for 12 more units, no. Okay, um, okay, then uh, uh, the, uh, uh, we discussed where the access roads will be placed. Um, the, uh, as was discussed here on the eastern border, uh, this line of trees my neighbor was discussing, uh, the, the ground is a crest. It, it, it slopes down to their backyard and then it slopes down into the, uh, the property that's going to be uh, upgraded. Um, is this, if this fill, is, if this is filled, how is this going to change the, uh, the water table that uh, is it, has it been considered how the water table is going to be changed so that it doesn't get raised into the Western Woods uh, neighborhood and potentially cause some basement damage and stuff like that? These are things that are handled at the time that the site plan is developed and the city has engineers that takes care of those things. Okay. Um, does he, uh, uh, will any, if this is modified and this things happen, does any burden go back to the developer? So the city doesn't have to carry this financial burden? Well, I'm not, I don't understand your question. Well, I mean, if, if let's say this, the, uh, this, the land gets leveled out, this dip, um, and the water table changes and people start seeing water in their basement, things like that happening, um, how will this be resolved for the current homeowners of Weston Woods? What does, does the city bear the financial responsibility of this or does, is there uh, an insurance policy with the developer or, uh, um, but in effect, you know, yeah. go ahead. Uh, oh, I was just gonna say, you know, as, as part of the uh, site plan review, the engineering department does look at that. Sure. And, and the Coon Creek Watershed District will sure. look at this. Okay. Um, so there's different engineering groups that, that do look at this and they control strong water runoff has to be contained and treated on site. Mm -hmm. I, I do remember there was kind of a debacle with um, when the, the Cub store was built in Riverdale and how the, uh, the water table changed in all the houses that were to the uh, Oh, I think they were, tech, I don't know if they were technically part of Anoka or part of Coon Rapids, but I knew people that just had to walk away from their houses because they had three feet of water in the yeah. basement. But anyway, that's my concern is, is uh, what, what happens if this uh, does. Um, bear with me a second. Uh, I just uh, got... Um, I... Uh, um, I looked at, uh, before this meeting, I looked in the Better Business Bureau and I plugged in Brookstone Construction. I got no results. Like how long they've been in business, 
Uh, yeah, just clear something up real quick. Yeah. It's, it's Brookside Construction. <laughs> okay. If that's if you want to look that up, it's Brookside. Sure. Okay, I will. Um, Um, anyway, the, uh, in the event that there's uh, some type of uh, problems, um, let's see, you know, the length that they've been in business, the, uh, um, the financial worth of it, how much insurance company or assets to handle problems um, after construction, um, is there any money set aside in escrow for problems and for how long, um, any... Uh, uh, Litigation problems that the company has had, you know, that they uh, uh, build this and then, uh, you know, dissolve the company to, to uh, resolve any uh, um, uh, type of litigation problems. That's just some, you know. M Mr. Chair, well, if I might. Mr. Mucciani. Your Honor. Or Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Day job. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair and Commission and members of the public. When we start talking about litigation and what's going to happen if the trees come out and your property is affected by your neighbor, things of that nature, that's not really the question before the commission this evening. Those are site plan questions where we talk about landscaping and water drainage and things like this. If you have the agenda in front of you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, the question you need to adjust address are whether these fit the criteria required for a land use amendment and a zone change. It's a pretty confined process this evening. So while your questions are all good questions, they're not really questions designed for the the two agenda items that we'll be discussing this evening. Well what we what we received here is is a, a notice for this meeting that inaccurately described the, the land that was to be affected as well as the company that was involved. And uh, um, so I, you know, I'm questioning, um, so, you know, and it's, it could have, although you're legal with uh, uh, establishing the, the Western boundary of this with the description, um, you know, there, and somebody's clearly gone out and put in stakes with uh, property lines and establish, you know, establish a property line on the Eastern side they might as well have done it on the western side too. But um, anyway, I mean, I guess it's the the point is let's reduce the confusion of what's going to happen here early on, so that it doesn't grow and and you know people like me get more suspicious and crazy. But anyway, um, I can know, appreciate where you're coming. You know, anyway, uh, that's about all I got. I appreciate all you right. listening. Thank you. Just to point out before anyone else would come up. The majority of all your questions are very premature. As the legal assist uh, direction was here earlier, this is simply for land use and zoning change. Questions you're asking pertain to the site plan of the actual property, which we don't have yet. So we can't answer those kinds of questions. Mr. Chair. So just keep that in mind. Just, uh, sorry, just one comment about that. I mean, I, I think what I do appreciate is that, I think your perspective is, is that the, the feedback, the comments you're making on tonight would have, um, would, would reflect on our ability to make a decision about the, the change that's proposed tonight. And I think that what we're all trying to share is that there is a process, and this is just step one of the process. Um, so I think there's a, a little bit of an ask in trusting the process a little bit. Um, but I, I really do want to echo the appreciation for you coming out tonight to um, share your, your concerns. Um, they're all very uh, meaningful to us and do help us. So um, just thought I would add that in. Chair Schwartz. Sir? Yes. Um, I just want to make two points. I agree with uh, Commissioner Schmolke. But tonight is an administrative kind of mm -hmm. paper shuffling decision that needs to be made the next step as stated by Commissioner Schmulke is once the plans come to us to say this is what we're proposing on this piece of land that's when the nitty-gritty will happen so a little a little bit tonight is premature because this is administrative and the second thing I'll just say is 
on both uh, proposals before us, it does say Brookstone construction instead of Brookside. And if, the, if I heard correctly, he said it was Brookside, not Brookstone. So that's one thing that needs to be correctified, if that is a word, <laughs> on, on the two cases. So. That's it. So with that in mind, if uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak, go ahead and go up to the microphone. I'm Kathleen Kloiber, and I live at 1450 126th Lane, which is on the corner of 126th and Crane Street. And my question is, has, at this point, do you consider the traffic that's going to be done? Crane Street is extremely busy at early morning and in the afternoon. And on 127th, there is many children there in the morning from the, the development north waiting for school buses plus the park. Traffic is not normally something that's considered uh, on land use and land zone, or on land use and zoning changes. That's, again, brought up at the time of site the, plans. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Joel Friday, 13127 Cary Street. I'm with Keller Williams Classic Realty, and I'm representing uh, Brookside Construction in this. And I, I just want to give a little history on the church. Um, I moved to Coon Rapids in 1980 with my mom after she got divorced. Um, she's been attending that church ever since, so that's how I've gotten involved here. The church has shrunk in size a uh, number of times and just want to let everybody know from Weston Woods that Weston Woods would not exist had the church not sold the land for Weston Woods. It was the church's property at one time. Um, the, the reason the church has approached me on this to do this is they are unable to fund any improvements to the church at this point. So they're gonna use the proceeds of this land sale to fund um, improvements to the church including the parking lot and renovations inside the church. The church is most of uh, everybody is aware of here is where you go to vote if you live in that neighborhood. So the church has been doing that uh, as long as I know. I've, I've voted there when I lived in the Oaks of Shenandoah. I don't vote there now. I have to go to the uh, county government center but it was still a voting place uh, for the presidential election that just happened. Uh, yeah, so there's, the, that's the reason behind this. Um, I guess I don't have any questions at this point, but I just wanted to let everybody know that, yes, the church is selling some land, but they're, where they live now was once the church land as well. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak at the public hearing? Step up to the microphone, please. Give me your name and address. My name is Mary Ann Nold. I live at 12650 Drake Street Northwest. I just need a clarification. I understand what your task is tonight as a commission. I hope that our concerns are heard in terms of those two points on which you're voting. Because it can sound as if you're going to make the decision and consider all our concerns later with the, or, you know, all this other land use stuff. So I have a concern about that. I'm, I'm pleading with the commission to hear our concerns. And perhaps that would even influence how you would vote on the two points you've been assigned. So I hope I understand this clearly. It seems to me if you vote, to change the zoning, the process will be rolling. And one of the steps, which one of our neighbors asked you not to do, um, will have been done. So I just want to clarify that, that our concerns be heard as you take your vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Last, last call. All right. Well, yeah, I want, I want, I want. All right. 
My name is Keith Johnston. I live at 12662 Drake Street. And everybody has already heard all of the uh, things that we are concerned about. But now, are we in line here that if the church needs money, we lose? That's all I've got to say. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Monitoring, monitoring, uh, monitoring the Zoom, and nobody wishes to speak on this issue. This issue. Thank you very much. At this time, I will close the public hearing and confine comments to the commission. <clears throat> And commission, your thoughts? Mr. Chair. Uh, folks. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Schmolke. So I guess for myself, um, the way that I'm looking at this is, and reading again what we have in here, it just, it truly does seem that the, the land use um, is compliant with like the compatibility around the surrounding area. Um, I do want to echo that I appreciate all the comments they said. There is clearly a lot of passion, a lot of um, concern, um, but I don't, I don't see where th this is an opportunity for improvement, which we make decisions around, you know, of, of improvements around the city all the time, right? And so I'm, I just don't see a lot of, um, I did not hear a lot of reason to deny this request, you know, is where I'm at. And I do fully understand the process. I think this is just the first step and we can certainly weigh their concerns in, in terms of like the, the trees, things like that, when the site plan comes forward. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Mr. Chair. Mr. Casey. Uh, Mary, w next time you talk, lean into the microphone. Thank you. Just, we, we're having a hard time hearing okay. you over here. <laughs> um, so I, I too think that this is a tangential issue for us. I mean, what is the land use in that area? What does it touch? What does it interfere with? I can't project um, what might be coming that these citizens are so concerned about. I can't predict that, but I would ish say to the developers, you, you need to be aware of the concerns. And um, mm -hmm. I, I, it, nothing's gonna sway me from my decision with uh, land use, but down the road, there'll be some concerns, so. Mr. Chair, I wholeheartedly uh, agree with what Commissioner Casey said that, I mean, churches, I understand that their congregations are dwindling, and uh, as ours is, and, and other churches have sold off parts of their parking lot. And, uh, but it, like she said, it is incumbent upon the developers, you know, and you, you might not be the developer, somebody else, we might not be the commission. Someday down the road, I can see somebody, uh, this church, you know, God forbid, but if it goes down or you know closes, that's the first thing that they're going to do is come and say we want to put more townhomes in here. And since we since we're surrounded by them, we might as well put some more in. So I'm not, you know, I I agree with the uh, the land use. Uh, I wish we had a better idea of where the what the line was going to be, and they're talking about the parking. Well, if those trees are going to stay, or the traffic, if those trees are going to stay there and there won't be any other roads, there shouldn't be any more traffic on that side. The traffic will go up to 127th, I believe. So it really shouldn't affect the traffic down in the uh, southern portion of it. But I, these people are <laughs> very well spoken and very, very concerned about their property, the value of their property. And so uh, kudos to them for coming and making their, even if it was a bit premature, mm -hmm. it's, you know, kudos to them for coming here and letting us know ahead of time. 
what the, what their thoughts are. Mr. Chair, if I can just add, 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 add an observation, and, and I think um, I've been here six years, and you know, Coon Rapids has had a, a, a practice which we're seeing here tonight in which we take zoning and land use decisions and we separate them from specific projects. Um, whether that's the right practice or the wrong practice, it's the one that, that we do. Other, other communities do it differently and, 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 that's, and that's fine. It does, I think, it does make it challenging as we saw this evening where the public comes in thinking there's more detail than, than we actually have. But it's, it's the process that, that we've put in place um, and as uh, uh, Attorney uh, Bucciconi pointed out, um, you know, the decision for the, for the Planning Commission is a fairly narrow focus and it really is, I think, related to those bigger picture issues is this an appropriate use? I think from the staff perspective, yes. I mean, it is surrounded by townhomes, and I think um, you know, a moderate density residential use is, a, is appropriate uh, in, in this particular situation. There are a lot of development details, and I think the, uh, the, the instructions, if you wanna call it that, to the developer, obviously they'd be well suited to pay attention to those when they do come back with a, with a site plan. And certainly as staff, those are things that we're gonna pay attention to when we get those when we get those details so just a little perspective i thought i would share thank you chair schwartz commissioner Nablock. i think it's a valid point that um when you have so many residents uh, voicing their concerns or issues that it adds a little extra weight to the discussion but i want to make a point too is that um if you look without the applicant and the people in the neighborhood, if you look at the actual application and look at it as a decision uh, based on the facts and the issues, uh, one thing I think is too is that the developer and the owner has to have equal concern or rights addressed for their needs as well. So they have every right to use the land within the accordance of the city ordinances and bylaws so they have equal rights as well in regards to this property and in regards to the two um, uh, applications of zoning and land use be, uh, being proposed to us I think we should just look at it in the legal sense in a technical sense and and address it and vote for it in that manner the the landowner and the developer has well, not the developer, but the landowner has those rights as well. So that's all. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. Uh, I, I do have a question. As I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the Muni Code, which shows you the rabbit hole that I got into, um, places of worship are a conditional use in moderate, moderate density, density residential. Is that, is that I mean, that's, that's what I'm seeing here. Mm -hmm. And we've got, we're splitting an institutional in half. We're looking at everything around it going, we're gonna cut it in half and make it MDR and leave half of it institutional. It, at what point does it make sense knowing that the guidance future here is to say, look, we're gonna make this MDR, give the church their conditional use as an institutional use in MDR and make the whole parcel all at once so that to the uh, public's comment, well, so if the church goes under and we come back and do this again, I mean, it, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this from a, from a high level does it make sense to have an institutional chunk sitting here regardless of the viability of the church or not? And to me, it's starting to look like, hey, this should be MDR, but we allow an existing use to stay there. So let's let that, let's let that institutional use be a conditional use of an MDR and make the whole parcel MDR, do the same thing with the zoning side of it, and basically be done with this chunk of parcel for its foreseeable future. The church stays put or it gets redeveloped as townhomes if the church goes under and they want to sell. And that makes development for the city a lot easier going forward. It makes it more attractive for a developer if that were to happen. Um, I, I know I'm expanding the scope of our conversation here, but I'm, I'm trying to even take this lens another step further. Correct me, Mr. Harlicker, if I'm wrong, but since it was only publicized that we're dealing on the eastern half of this property, we wouldn't be able to change the zoning for the western half tonight. Tonight, 
You're correct, uh, Chair Schwartz. And uh, to touch on a little bit, the, the land use designation reflects the, the use of the land. Um, the reason this was zoned institutional because it was all owned by the church and it was all mm -hmm. um, church property. I mean, uh, from a, a technical point of view, I guess, um, changing the land use designation of the uh, part of the parcel that the church is going to retain ownership was to moderate density residential then would be in conflict with what the property is actually being used for, which mm -hmm. is a church and institutional use. Okay. Um, that was kind of the thinking behind why we're just going to do the, portion. The, the east half of it at this time. Yeah. Again, you're, you're correct. If they want to, if they go under and they want to uh, sell the property, we'd be back right here again. Chair yep. Schwartz. Commissioner Knobloch. I, I agree with uh, uh, Commissioner Geisler's reasoning in regards to making it all MBR, but the question I have is for Mr. Harlecker, and it might be legal uh, a question as well, is if that were theoretically to be all made MBR, then that institutional part that the church would still be on, would that not be cons uh, altered for tax base for the city? or? Is the institutional category, is that a different tax rate for the city or not, is the question. Mr. I, Chair, I think, I, think that's, I think it's entirely a, a, you know, a separate issue. It's a separate yeah, matter yeah, how, okay. it's, how, how the county looks at it for, or the city looks at it for tax purposes. Okay. Then. Mr. Chair. Oh, go ahead, Ron. Commissioner Bradley. You're close. I'm sorry. Uh, I agree that we, we've got a narrow focus here. I understand the, the public's concern. Um, I think that based on the guidelines, the criteria in front of us, that we have to keep it to uh, the narrow issue in front of us. However, that being said, some of their concerns when it does come back and the one that if it's true that I think that staff and the developer have to look at closely is uh, if southbound traffic has to be diverted back through the private roads of that other uh, neighborhood, uh, that's concerning to me. And I, I see kind of a response there that that's not necessarily nece uh, going to have to be an issue in the future which is good. I just want to make sure it's addressed because that, that's going to be difficult if uh, they uh, are forcing traffic through a private community. Mr. Chair. Yeah, Commissioner I believe Geisler. It, it, well, Commissioner Bradley, the, the only at real access is actually off of Crane, which would be a city street. Drake would be the private one. Right. Um, so the fact that there's traffic going through Drake could maybe be from Hanson, just north of the co-op towards towards there, but there is no, um, that property would have no reason to go on Drake uh, as, as the traffic flow goes. It doesn't just, okay. to get to 252, they go to Crane because that's the access. Um, and if they want to go northbound on Hanson, they're going to 127th. So, right. I mean, it just, I would never drive that way. It doesn't stop somebody from doing it, but it doesn't make any logical sense. Yeah, no, and I'm fine with that. It's just that I didn't know those de designations and which was the private. And traffic could very easily just go west on 127th to Hanson, go north on Hanson to 129th, make a U-turn, mm -hmm. come back south. So. So. All right, any other discussion or if we have someone willing to make a motion? Mr. Chair, I have a question about the motion. Um, we've talked about institutional um, well, land use, we're, we're in land use now, but the word institutional keeps coming up. So is the motion properly stated? We're going, we're, we're looking at land use, so from low density residential, does that encompass that institutional? No, no, no. The, 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 the motion should be from, low, from institutional to moderate density residential. Okay, that's, I, I made the correction, but I'm, 
you know, you had to check. <laughs> and that's only on the land use, not on the zone. The zone is stated correctly. Speak up, Mayor. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I moved it. <laughs> oh, I said, so that's only on the land use, not on the zone. The zone is zoning stated correctly. is still actually moderate density or low density, correct? Or the zoning is. Yes. Okay, so that's what we are confused on. Got it. I even moved my chair Ms. up. <laughs> What's that? I even moved my chair up. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I would make a motion. Commissioner Casey. In planning case 21-6, uh, I recommend we approve, um, I recommend approval of the proposed land use amendment from institutional to moderate density residential based on the following three points. The proposed comprehensive land use amendment is compatible with the adjacent comprehensive land use designations and land uses. That the proposed comprehensive land use amendment will not have an adverse impact on the adjacent properties. And the proposed comprehensive land use amendment is supportive of the comprehensive land use plan, land use chapter, and housing chapter policies for the city including identification of underused non-residential sites that may be suitable for higher density residential use. Another policy is to review and update the city's zoning regulations periodically for residential districts to reflect changing lifestyles and ensure that infill development is compatible with the surrounding neighborhoods in scale and design. And I'll second it. Motion by Casey, second by Nomlock. Any further discussion? Chair, Commissioner looking Michael. at uh, recommendation number two, the proposed comprehensive land use amendment will not have an adverse effect, am, adverse impact on the adjacent properties. Well, the audience was full of people saying that it would have mm -hmm. an effect on their properties. They're well, I mean, that's what their feeling is. It's a feeling, it's a perspective, it's not a fact. Yeah. So we're saying, we're, we're, the um, staff is telling us is that it is, that it, it based on um, every, all the facts, that it does not have an adverse impact on the neighboring properties. Their concerns are premature. Correct. And I hope they understand that too. Correct. But that, our role is, I think, clear cut tonight. Yep. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. You know, I, I think it's maybe worthwhile to remind, remind from a frame of reference. Um, institutional could also be a government building, including a garage. We could put that there. Uh, we could put in a school. We could put in a correctional facility. Um, all of these things are allowed under institutional and uh, from a conditional use in that space. Um, I think those folks would much rather have townhomes than a prison in their backyard. Um, so from a land use perspective, moderate density fits the area much better. Exactly. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Bradley. Uh, I tend to agree in that I, what we're looking for is uh, under the city planning and, st uh, and their land use um, plan in general to put the, the property to its highest and best use. And that's always been the goal of the city um, and that the change supports a higher and better use than a vacant organizational property. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is a recommendation by the Planning Commission and a decision will be made by the City Council at the April 20th meeting. Mr. Chair, can I just ask a procedural question? So, Commissioner Casey made the motion. Who seconded it? I didn't know that. Uh, Commissioner um, Nablock. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, uh, Planning Case 21-7, a zone change to change the zoning from low density residential two to moderate density residential at 12691 Hanson Boulevard, Brookside construction. Mr. Harlicker has already given 
his presentation. Is there anything you need to add at this time? Um, Mr. Harlicker. Chair Schwartz, at this point, no. Um, the recommendation includes um, the following. The proposed zoning to moderate density residential is consistent with the proposed land use designation of moderate density residential. Uh, the proposed rezoning is compatible with the adjacent land uses and zoning. And the proposed zone change would not have an adverse impact on the area. Uh, the area is predominantly zoned as PUDs with townhomes as the, as the use. All right, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Harlicker before we have a public hearing? All right, at this time I will open a public hearing in planning case 21-7, the zone change to change the zoning from low density residential two to moderate density residential at 12691 Hanson Boulevard. Anyone wish to speak at this public hearing? Anyone wish to speak? Seeing none. Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Buccioni. Just letting the chair know there's nobody in the Zoom room wishing to speak on this issue. Thank you. We will close the public hearing. Commission. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Schmolke. I will, in planning case 21-7, uh, make a motion that the planning commission recommend approval of the proposed zone change um, from low residential, is that correct? Okay. Low residential two to moderate density <coughs> residential based on the, um, the already stated uh, facts from Mr. Harlicker. Second. Motion by Schmolke, second by Geisler. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is a recommendation by the Planning Commission and will be introduced by the City Council at their April 6th meeting. I would just ask that the petitioners uh, listen to what the uh, audience did have to say, especially about the attempt to save the trees on the eastern border property line, and I guess the trees on the south property line as well, as much as possible. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, now we have case number one, planning case 21-5, a site plan to approve design and use flexibility for a ground sign at 1560 Coon Rapids Boulevard, Indigo Signs. Mr. Harlicker. Yes, uh, Commissioner, or Chair and uh, Commissioners. And this is request for design flexibility as well as use flexibility uh, for a second monument sign on the property. Uh, if you recall, the uh, city recently approved the development of this parcel for a, a small uh, caribou coffee um, cabin drive through facility. <laughs> um, here's a site plan that was approved. Um, you can see there are two signs being proposed. Uh, this sign here is a sign for the uh, uh, regional park. Um, this was uh, originally approved, or the, the, the sign for the park uh, was originally approved back in uh, 2001. Anoka uh, County entered into a uh, agreement with the city that allowed the county to install the sign for the Coon Rapids Dam Regional Park on uh, city property. Uh, the sign was installed that year and is uh, still in place today. The agreement for that sign is still in effect even though the property has changed ownership. Um, following uh, Caribou Coffee's uh, site plan approval, they entered into discussions with the uh, Anoka County to put together a joint sign that would uh, be used by both the, uh, the applicant as well as the uh, regional park. Um, two parties could not reach an agreement. Um, so what transpired next was uh, Caribou Coffee um, applied for a sign permit at the proposed location here. 
um, since it did not uh, comply with the uh, code uh, limiting uh, one freestanding sign to this property. Um, it was denied and that led them to uh, tonight's meeting with the application for uh, use flexibility for the second sign as well as uh, design flexibility for uh, a component of the uh, proposed sign. Um, we'll start with uh, design flexibility first. Um, the overlay district uh, requires that a structure surround the face of the sign uh, from the base to the top be uh, solid, continuous, and consist of uh, materials that are complementary uh, to the building or match the, uh, uh, the base of the sign. This is the proposed sign. It's got a, uh, it'll have a stone base and then the sign sitting on top of the, the base. Um, the sign does not, uh, the design doesn't lend itself to uh, what uh, is, is typically considered a, a monument style sign. Um, the sign reflects uh, the corporate design and colors of the building. Um, the sign is not in response to site conditions. It's uh, more reflective of uh, uh, the caribou image and reflects the uh, design of the uh, building. Um, so that's what they're requesting design flexibility for, is to have that um, enclosure around the actual sign itself. Uh, to grant uh, design flexibility, the applicant must show that it will result in better integration of uses or public amenities. Uh, the proposed sign, um, the design of the sign uh, does not result in better integration of the sign with the building. Um, it is compatible with respect to uh, size and colors. Uh, the applicant must also show that granting the design flexibility will further the intent of the section. Uh, the sign does meet this criteria in that the design of the sign uh, reflects the uh, building and colors that are compatible with the building and kind of the theme of the Mississippi River. Um, secondly is the uh, use flexibility component. Um, as stated earlier, the uh, code uh, limits the, uh, the second uh, monument sign on the property. Uh, it prohibits the uh, two ground signs on the lot. Uh, use flexibility uh, can be approved provided the applicant demonstrates uh, the modification significantly advances the intent of the section. Uh, modification is necessary to develop the property in a well-organized way and the plan provides significant amenities, buffers, or ele elements to offset any uh, potential harmful effects. And the use does not detract from the uses in the port district. Um, staff does believe that the proposed sign uh, meets these criteria. Uh, it advances the uh, intent of the section in that it will allow the business to be identified to those traveling along Coon Rapids Boulevard. Uh, the sign will allow the property to be developed in an efficient, uh, well-organized way. Uh, ground signs are a, a normal component to site development. Um, the site is unique because the existing regional park sign prohibits the business from having their own sign without the granting of use flexibility. And the existing and proposed landscaping uh, along the the boulevard, we can pull up the landscape plan here. <coughs> you can see how the, uh, the frontage along Coon Rapids Boulevard is, is really heavily landscaped. Um, you've got ornamental trees, uh, with the overstory trees, the grasses, and they have the uh, ground cover and perennials around the base of the sign. This is extended all the way down to Egret Boulevard. Um, and the proposed sign will not detract from other uses in the port district. Um, staff is recommending that the commission uh, deny the request for design flexibility based on the following that the design of the sign is not in response to site conditions 
it's more reflective of the uh, what the uh, caribou like to sign to look like and that it reflects their uh, corporate image. And um, with the use flexibility, uh, staff is recommending commission approve a use flexibility based on the uh, uh, four findings uh, in the staff report. Uh, with that, I'll answer any questions. Uh, the applicant's uh, representative is also in the audience tonight. And Mr. Chair, I should say, I'm sorry, uh, Joey Crary is also in the Zoom room and wished to speak after this gentleman, I think. Thank you. Commission, any questions for Mr. Harlicker at this time? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. Mr. Harlicker, you mentioned that the sign agreement between the city and the county is still in effect. Um, I'm curious how that's the case when the city doesn't own the land anymore. Um, how how did, did that transfer with the sale of the land, or how, how did that come about? Yes, there's language like in a lot of easements and agreements. It ties future owners to this agreement. So it, it continues on regardless of whether the property changes hands or not. Okay. Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Nablog. I have a question for Mr. Harlicker. Uh, two questions. One, um, is there any viability that Caribou and Coon Rapids Dam sign could revisit and have a joint sign? And the second question is, is there a possibility that Caribou could be allowed to put Caribou coffee or something on the roof like some of their other buildings have in other parts of the Twin Cities? Um, uh, Commissioner Knobloch, the city code uh, prohibits uh, signs that extend above the roof line. And the applicant can speak to this further too about the, the length of the discussions they had, but they had very lengthy discussions with the uh, uh, Anoka County and they actually came up with some possible designs for the sign, but in the end um, they couldn't reach an agreement. So, is, 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 there, is it, um, I see the result is nothing came of it, but is it uh, like with mediation or further time that that could be resolved or not at all? I'll have to let the applicant speak to that. All right, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Harlicker? Mr. Mr. Heichel. Uh, I'm wondering about Caribou not being aware of this sign situation before they decided to build there. It seems to me like a company as big as Caribou would have thought further ahead and had that kind of worked out before they come back later and say, well, we have to add another sign now because the county won't allow us to piggyback on theirs. Something that should have been thought about earlier, yes. in my opinion. Mr. Chair. Mr. Schmolke. So I'm just to clarify, there is, I'm looking at, again, the, um, the plan. Um, there's only one sign being requested, correct? Not two, right? So mm -hmm. the existing Anoka sign stays. We're talking about adding the additional one, correct? Correct. Okay. There'll be a total of two signs, one for the caribou and the existing uh, park sign. Okay, and so it doesn't look and, um, spatially challenged a little bit here, so there's no impedance of one sign with the other, right, in terms of as they're coming down Coon Rapids Boulevard, the size of the Caribou sign doesn't impede with the um, distant sign for the Anoka, the existing monument sign that's there, et cetera, correct? I, you're, yeah, I didn't. I'm sorry, so the, the monument sign that's being requested for the Caribou Coffee Shop, right, as you're coming down Coon Rapids Boulevard, it doesn't impede upon the existing sign that's there for the Anoka County sign, correct? It doesn't no, block you, anything. You can see the, the sign is a little bit closer. You can see them both. There's closer. no... Okay. Um, uh, and it's... To it's, the, to the inside, interior of the lot, the... Sure. Uh, the... Uh, Existing sign actually crosses over uh, okay. the property line and is partially in the, 
the, the right of way out here. So okay, and it's, then it's, so, and it's a it's a much yeah. shorter. Okay, <laughs> and so where the sign is being proposed, with all the trees, the shrubs, etc., in that area, do we um, expect that at some point will it, can that those trees, shrubs um, become overgrown, block that sign? I, I guess I want to just make sure where they're even asking for it to be placed. That that's the is there any issue with that? Well, uh, Commissioner Schmalke, the the actual plantings around the sign are, are more ground cover. Sure. Low cover. But are in, the, um, in proximity the, to the others. These trees here um, are yep. further into the site. So as you're coming down Coon Rapids Boulevard here, it shouldn't impede the visibility of the site. And as these trees Develop. mature, the branches grow up and you'll be able to see the sign from underneath. It's not like evergreen trees that are have right. the just seen it so many times right um yep. where it's just that's not taken into consideration that as the trees and so forth mature um some of these signs then become blocked it's yep. you know etc so i just wanted to get a better understanding of that and again um how it uh, is balanced with the rest of the property so yep. okay, thank you mr chair Mr. Casey. I have one more question about that sign. What are the dimensions of it? And it has a stone base, this proposed sign. And show me again. So how, what are the dimensions? The sign is about 10 feet, 8 inches wide, and a little less than it's 10, feet, 10 feet tall. That's including the base. Including the base. Okay, so 10 by 10. And um, is it? The decorative cabinet's 7 by 10. 7 feet tall, 10 feet wide. Yeah, okay. Is it solid? I mean, is it solid stone? Well, this, well, I'm not sure what you mean by solid. It's hard to envision the, a little bit. The base is stone, <laughs> and then there's a space between the base and the actual sign. Is that open? Is it? Stone? The, the sign will sit on top, right on top of the base. It's okay. not like it'll be sitting so, on two posts. Yeah, that, and it makes it look like it's sitting, sitting on, on top of two the, posts, but that's all stone. Yep. <coughs> they're, they're showing the structural design elements. The two posts are there to hold the sign yeah, up, and then the brick, the brick is out, just a facade around it to make it look nice. Okay. And it faces northwest as Coon Rapids Boulevard? Yeah, it's perpendicular to the boulevard. Okay, and where on the property would it sit? Would it be toward the northernmost edge? Kind of right in the middle, it's right here. Here's the building. Mm -hmm. The drive-through is here. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of in the middle of it, towards the middle of the site, to the okay. west-northwest of the building. The next map oh. up from the landscaping plan shows it as number 10. Um, it's the site plan there, and it's the, the box. And this is the site. Right, right there, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Neville, uh, I just have to voice that I, with the information provided and what I see, I don't think we should support this design flexibility. Um, we're trying to improve the look of Coon Rapids Boulevard and appearance, and we don't want to have um, unnecessary storage uh, facilities and solar panels, and, and we want to beautify and have less confusion and more beautification on the boulevard. So um, I, I just can't see that uh, design uh, flexibility is suitable in this situation. That's for the whole commission. It's just what I have to say. All right, thank you. Is there anything a petitioner would like to add? Please come to the microphone, give your name for the record, please. Thank you, Chair and Commission. My name is John Fanning. Uh, address is 2485 Acorn Run in Victoria. Uh, we actually, I represent uh, uh, 
Coffee Holdings, which is the owner of the property. We're the landlord that leases it to Caribou. Um, so to address some of the questions that came up, um, I think the first one is regarding the sign and our discussions with the county. You know, it was interesting because when we first approached this and had the site plan approved, um, you know, there was information regarding the sign. We located it on there. So from day one when we purchased it, we never knew that the existing sign from uh, the county was going to be a restriction to our use because it was in an easement and it was under a separate basically an agreement. So we never knew it was going to be a restriction. So when we started planning, um, I actually, you know, we spoke with staff, came to them and said, hey, we have an idea, you know, to try to clean up Coon Rapids Boulevard. We'd like to have a conversation because we had an application in and we, t we actually really withdrew that application so we could have a conversation with the county. We went through some different conversations, different reiterations as related to the design. And then one day, county came back and said, nope, we're, we're really not having those conversations anymore. We're not sure why and what the, what the idea of that was, because I think it really became a win-win-win all the way around. It was a win for the city, it was a win for the county, it was a win for us, because you know, part of it is just the modernization of the county signage. And they had done it in other locations. So with that said, that's why we moved forward with this sign. Um, we've gone through some different locations of trying to identify uh, to, I guess, to address a little bit is the visibility, not to obstruct the view of the sign from the county. Uh, so it was placed where it was. You know, in regards to, I think, some of the questions regarding the signage and the design, um, you know, I think the design and the intent is, is really to match the building. You know, it's to match the integrity of what we are trying to do as part of the design of the building. Um, you know, Caribou's look, feel, as it relates to just the concept and the brand itself. Um, obviously, signage is critical you know, to, to businesses like this, especially the way the site is designed. You know, it's, it's designed, it's a little depressed. You know, the high level landscape that was required, the maintaining of the existing trees that were there, the signage is critical, um, you know, because unfortunately the building just doesn't do it. And especially, you know, the size and the speed that goes down uh, Coon Rapids Boulevard. So that's why we approached it the way we did. When you look at the sign, size wise, we're within the code itself. Really, again, the only variation that we're asking for is, is just uh, some of the materials as it relates to the border of the sign. But for the most part, we're, we're really conforming to everything else. But as far as the use, and I think our process of, and what our request is, is really to give the opportunity to be successful as a business. And again, I think the idea was to try to blend in the best that we could and match not only the area, but be respectful to Coon Rapids Boulevard um, and really blend in with the landscape and everything else. Um, there are a couple people on the phone. I think Joey is on there uh, for questions. He's actually with our sign company, uh, our Caribou sign company that's working. He can answer some of the technical questions, but I think that really the major questions and I think uh, you know, what I tried to express is really the bigger picture of why we're doing what we're doing and what we're asking for. And glad to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for the petitioner? Mr. Chair. Commissioner is there any flexibility on the materials um, at all? So if the materials is the big um, drawback, is there any flexibility on that? Well, I think, I, I think part of it is that the materials really need to match what's sure. in the building, which is the way the code is written. Um, you know, the stone of the ba or the base stone that matches the building and the stone that's in there. So I, I, I guess I would kind of leave that up to you guys. I mean, we can make the adjustments, but again, what we're trying to do is conform to Every aspect of the code, the only, the, really the two is one is a special use because it's a secondary sign in the property. Um, and then really, you know, some of the materials as are related to the cabinet. But again, that kind of matches the design of the, mm -hmm. you know, to say that we wouldn't, absolutely not. I mean, I think we could be creative, but um, I think, you know, the design and the intent of the design really matches what the building is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Buccioni, people on the phone, on Zoom or on the phone, anything they'd like to add? Mr. Crary, I've allowed you to talk and unmuted you. Could you please state your name and address? Uh, good afternoon. My name is Joey Crary, um, 7158 McKenzie Avenue, Northeast, Sauk Rapids, Minnesota, or uh, Otsego, Minnesota. Um, I am representing this these caribou coffee and this uh, project here in regards to the technical terms of the sign project itself 
Um, We lose him. He's still there. Yep, but here we go. He was on a cell phone, uh, Mr. Chair. He said earlier in chat, so perhaps that cut out. Mr. Chair, if he comes back, he can chat, and I'll let the uh, chair. All right. All right, at this time, I will open a public hearing in planning case 21-5, a site plan to approve design and use flexibility for ground sign at 1560 Coon Rapids Boulevard for indigo signs. Anyone wishing to speak at the public hearing? And do we have anyone on Zoom? There is one individual on Zoom, uh, Mr. Chair, but that besides Mr. Crary, and he has not asked to speak. All right. Uh, seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and limit uh, discussion to the commission. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. So I have a couple things that I'm looking at this, uh, mainly because when I'm thinking about this sign, um, in my opinion, the caribou sign is the primary sign of this site and the county sign is a secondary site. Uh, we tied their hands as a city with this parcel with that agreement. They had to do it. Uh, they took a very difficult site to develop and put something on it that's gonna be productive for the city. And you know, when I look at the design standards, you know, uh, it's gone now, but the Dairy Queen had basically the same sign and the difference was that it was just a brick square that they slapped the sign on. In my opinion, that doesn't necessarily add a whole lot to this other than making it more costly for them to put the sign up in the first place. Um, I, I actually, when I, when I consider the design, si the design of the sign, they've, they've made a monument sign, they fit the specifications, they've minimized the impact, the brick matches the building, the building is minimus in its design, and so therefore should be the sign. The sign actually matches the design concept that we approved. Um, we did discuss the fact that there were two signs there. Frankly, I mean, honestly, the thing that's the most disappointing to me in this is that our friends at the county just, uh, ejected out of the conversation and didn't give them a good reason why. Uh, that's unfortunate, um, especially since we were gracious enough to let them put their sign up <laughs> in the first place. Uh, so I, I'm actually inclined to uh, approve the design flexibility and the, um, and the use flexibility on this one, because frankly, they, they've done their level best to make this look good. Uh, to match, I, I, I think asking them to come back again with another sign design is a little egregious on our part, especially since our fr friends at the county made it harder for them. Um, I, I think they, they, have, they have provided a, a design that makes sense for what we've got here um, and for all that they have done to, to further the, the use of this site that laid fallow. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Casey. When I was going through this application, the, the thing that occurred to me was they're a business, they're an enterprise, they've got to have a sign. They sit to the side of the Coon Rapids Boulevard. We can't ask them, I don't want to ask them to just go off the, the colors of their logos and they do have caribou coffee written, you know, on, off the roof line in a couple of spots, but I think it's unfair to them to tie their hands, so to speak, and not give them a sign, particularly as they get on the radar of people who are going to be doing that traveling. So I would, I guess I would favor accepting the design flexibility. Mr. Chair. If I can just add, I, I mean, I think as the staff, we kind of fully acknowledge this is a little bit of an odd situation to be in, <laughs> recommending 
one one set of flexibilities and, and denying the other. And Scott Scott and I talked about this beforehand, and I think, you know, just it it is our job to to make this recommendation. Sometimes it may it may not be the most comfortable thing to do, but I mean I think you know basically that was kind of the conclusion we reached. What I'll say is I guess if if it, and we've had two con commissioners speak perhaps in favor of of approving the design flexibility. I think what we might do if if there's broader consensus to do that, we'll probably have to change our findings of fact, I would think, right? So <laughs> that'll be something we'll need to think through how we want to do that. Thank you. Chair Schwartz. Commissioner Navalak. Can there be design flexibility uh, towards Inoka County that uh, we're giving them the right to have a sign? Uh, perhaps uh, there is an option that we could put some requirements towards the county that they should upgrade their sign or defer it and let the business that is um, kind of uh, put their stake down on that plot of land in the development of Coon Rapids Boulevard and the city is not willing to upgrade or work on their sign, perhaps is that an option for the city and the planning commission to put forth to the uh, Anoka County and their sign? Question. Mr. Harlicker, when the city entered into the agreement with the county back in 2001, do we have a, any idea what the length of term of that agreement was? Uh, there was no end date on it. <laughs> Mr. Chair, it, as I understand it, it's sort of in perpetuity. It was yeah. a, essentially a license agreement that the city entered into, so they have it for as long as it's, it's there. And I guess to address Commissioner Knobloch's question, you know, we can't, we can't yeah. retroactively <laughs> add a condition to the county. So I think we have to deal with what's before us, which is the, which is the, the caribou sign. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Heichel, or Commissioner Bradley, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to hear that the, uh, Members are kind of uh, looking out for um, commerce, which is really the backbone of our city, our tax base, that this was a uh, difficult site to develop and that Caribou in general, I think, is looked on as a, a very good corporate citizen of the state and the Midwest. That in in the long run, even though they've had some difficulties with the signage and with the county, it, it appears that maybe they did you a favor by creating the difficulty because you you may gain your own independent sign, which is a much better item for you as far as uh, commerce. Um, I'm inclined to allow the design flexibility myself. Um, because I see the corporate branding as a valuable asset for the business and for the uh, company uh, and their marketing. And I believe that is uh, a property that has some property rights that uh, is good for the company. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I, I just have one more question. I'm assuming that the design of the sign is consistent with the signs they use for other cabin locations, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Hagler? I'm not sure if I heard what Commissioner Smokey was saying there, but my question has to do with if we set a precedent here and make a, a, a a flexible flexibility change does that somewhere down the road are we going to have to be more flexible for others it doesn't sound um, like this sets a precedent I don't it's know that it does we kind of look at each case independent of uh, 
you know, on its own merits, because each site is unique and different from the other ones. There isn't a, a, a universal or citywide um, vision as far as signs go. So each each sign and each request for flexibility is really unique to the site that it's being applied for. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harlicker, can you, off the top of your head, uh, think of any other properties that we've allowed a secondary sign? Um, no, but again, this is unique. Mm -hmm. you know, the Mr. Harlecker, um, just one, that new Chipotle that went in by the Cub off of Northdale and Hanson, you know, the new Chipotle, I think we allowed them to yep. put a sign, it is, two monument signs, one on the Cub side and then one on the Chipotle side. So one's visible from Northdale, one from Hanson. Are those considered two signs? Yeah, I'm not sure the, the that was a while ago. Um, Chipotle's Depending on, on the size of the lot and the, the length of frontage that there is. Um, that might have been it might have, It's exception. possible, you know, because it's such a long, it's got so much frontage. Yeah, it does, and, and it turns a corner at the yeah. same time. Um. Okay, just trying to pick my brain yeah. a little bit there. I have a question for Mr. Harlicker. Could we have an uh, image how the proposed caribou coffee sign would be positioned in, in its relation to the Anoka County Coon Rapids Dam sign? Is like the distance the between the angle? No, there's no, not. There isn't? Okay. So one's not positioned right in front of the other one. <laughs> Correct. Yes, okay, good. It is set back. There might be some, some overlap, um, but it is set back farther. <clears throat> Here's the edge of this one, so it's kind of running right in here. So, Mr. Chair, if I, I'm, I'm probably not adding to the conversation, but, I, you know, staff does not have any issue with two signs. I think right. we recognize, and I, I think Commissioner Geisler kind of stated, articulated really well the, the rationale for the use piece of having two signs. Um, I think the, uh, our issue is with the design of mm -hmm. it, and Attorney Buccicone uh, showed me some potential language that we could consider um, for the commission to then recommend design flexibility. Again, that's if there's, excuse me, collective interest on the commission in doing that. So Blair, I don't know if you wanna read that or suggest how we wanna approach that. Uh, somebody ready to write? Writing. Hmm. <laughs> Work in progress. <laughs> the applicant has demonstrated the alternative approach to meeting the design standards is necessary to respond to site conditions. Okay, Period. I got <laughs> applicant has demonstrated. Yeah. <laughs> you want me? Could you say why, why don't you just go ahead and read it and we can just let the secretary refer to your comments. Perfect. The design of the sign matches the approved materials and colors of the building and given the landscaping plan of the property and the second sign the alternative approach is necessary because of the aforementioned site conditions. If the, Sounds good. If the commission looks to the third paragraph under design flexibility, it's tweaking that one. Okay. And we're adding this as a fifth condition? Is that what you're... No, that's, no. this would be for design flexibility. Okay, all right. And while you're re reviewing that, I just uh, would like to reiterate that the Planning Commission is uh, either approving or denying mm -hmm. design flexibility, um, but making a recommendation uh, needs flexibility. Okay. Oh, it is recommended. Right. Okay. 
Okay. You guys? Mr. Chair, so just to clarify, Scott, then, the Planning Commission has discretion over the design flexibility, is that correct? Correct. Council has discretion over the use flexibility. Yep. Got it. So this is the decision by the Planning Commission on design. Correct. And a recommendation up by the Planning Commission on use. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Do we have someone willing to make a motion? Should those be two separate actions then, Blair? Or is it okay to kind of... I would do it disparately, yes. I'd do two separate motions, given the different results. Because if there was a denial, there's always an appeal, I believe. Correct. So it would have all gone to council, and it still could, but... So do we have a motion on the design flexibility? I would suggest Chair Schwartz going the other way there. I would do the use flexibility first. All right. And then deal with the design flexibility. All right. Let's, do we have a recommend or a this motion on the recommendation on the use flexibility? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Schmoke. Speak up into the speaker. Uh, in planning case 21-5, um, uh, I move, I make a motion that the commission recommend approval of use flexibility based on the following. The applicant demonstrated the modification significantly advances the intent of, the sec of this section. The proposed sign will advance the intent of the section It will, um, it, in that it will allow the business to be identified to those traveling along Coon Rapids Boulevard. The sign will allow the property to develop in an efficient and well-organized way. Ground signs allow businesses to be identified by drivers along the street. Ground signs are a normal component to site development. This is a unique situation because of the existing regional park sign prohibits the business from having their own sign without the granting of use flexibility. The plan provides significant site amenities, buffers, and other elements to offset any potential harmful effects that could be caused by the use. The existing and proposed landscaping enhances the appearance of the sign and offsets any potential visual impacts caused by the sign. The proposed sign will not detract from other uses in port districts. And is there a second? Second. Motion by Schmoke, second by Geisler on the use flexibility. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. This is a recommendation by the Planning Commission and decision will be made by the City Council at their April 6th meeting. Now we need a motion on the design flexibility. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Geisler. In planning case 21-5 as a second item, I move that the planning case, or the planning commission approve, approve, approve the design flexibility um, as requested as the applicant has demonstrated the alternative approach to meeting the design standards and is, necessar is, is necessary to respond to site conditions. The design of the sign matches the approved materials and colors of the building and given the landscaping plan of the property and the second sign, the alternative approach is necessary because of the aforementioned site conditions. I'll second it. Motion by Geisler, second by Knobloch. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries, and this is a decision by the Planning Commission and can be appealed within 10 days if someone so chooses. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry it took, you so, it took us so long yeah. to get to you. <laughs> it was a long meeting. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, moving on to other business. Mr. Harlicker, anything for other business? Um, 
No, no uh, projects have started. Um, next month, we've got uh, uh, another land use and zone change um, for property off of uh, Robinson Drive between Martin and 113th. Um, it's a property that Shamrock used to own, kind of tucked behind the bank. Um, they're looking to uh, change that to, again, to moderate density residential mm -hmm. um, for townhouse development. And uh, we've got a preliminary plat for uh, property off of Eagle Circle and 105th um, for a three lot, single family lot subdivision. That's what will be before the commission next month. All right, thank you. And commission, anyone have anything for other business? Hearing none. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion by Schmolke, second by Geisler. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meetings adjourned. <laughs>